Hello there. Um, in today's video, we'll talk about iterators, and I've separated this video in three sections. What, how, and why. So let's get started. So what is an iterator? An iterator allows us to perform a task on a sequence of items in turn. And while this may seem obvious due to the name iterator, it's important to pay attention to the fact that it only allows us to perform the task. That is, it doesn't perform the task by itself. To exemplify, let's take a look at this. We have a vector view one, which just has the values one, two, and three. And then we'll create this iterator by doing uh, v1.iter. Okay. This code isn't really doing anything. We have an iterator, but it's just there. But it allows us to do something like so we can now iterate through every value in this iterator and get results. So now let's just, oh, that's a bit of a spoiler to what we'll get into. Let's just cargo run this and you'll see that we get one, two, and three. Okay. And this is similar to pretty much just creating a vector like we did and creating a for loop that creates an index and it iterates through zero to the vector's length. Now, if we run this, you'll see that we get the same. I think we get one, two, and three. Okay. Now let's go back. And a quick note is that this for loop, it is taking ownership of our iterator. So we can no longer use it after here. So for example, if I wanted to do print line and print our iterator, this will give us an error because it's saying that the value borrow here is being borrowed here after move. So a move is occurring here. Okay, and now that we've talked about the what, Let's get into the how. Okay, so how is the iterator doing this magic? Um, every iterator implements a trait that looks somewhat like this. And this has some unknown syntax like type and self item. Um, so I figured that the best way to properly explain this is through an example. So the example that I want to drive is that of creating a struct called Fibonacci, which is going to store numbers that follow the pattern where the next number is equal to the sum of the previous two. So for example, if we have one and then one, then the next number will be two. After this, the next number will be three. After this, the next number will be five and so forth. Okay, so we'll create the struct and the struct is gonna hold our current value and our next value so that then we can obtain a new next value. Okay, and now for this Fibonacci uh, struct, I want to implement uh, our iterator. So we'll say implement iterator for Fibonacci, and now we get to the unknown syntax. But by looking at this, I feel like it gives a better feel of what it is. This type item is an associated type, and we'll get more into that later, but from here you can see that we have to say then, oh, U32, and this is the associated type with our implementation. Um, yeah, so the iterator trait has several uh, default methods that are already implemented but the only method that we have to implement really is next and in this implementation I am creating a new next which is getting our current value in our next value so just in the example I gave one one our new next will be two okay then we'll update our current value and we'll update our next value so we can progress in the sequence after this, we'll return our current value as required by the function signature. Okay. 
now let's actually put this to use. Um, let's create an instance, delete all this, and create an instance of our Fibonacci struct called fib. And after this, we'll just iterate from zero. Uh, well, we're iterating 10 times. Doesn't really matter that it's from zero to 10, but iterating 10 times, I'm just putting this as a placeholder because we don't really use the index. And in here, we'll just print the current number and then go to the next one. Okay. Something that we could do is we could do instead of fib.current, we could do fib.next, but then we would be skipping the first item. So I'm just doing fib.current so we include the first one. Now, this is what you saw at the beginning of the video. If I just cargo run this, you see that we'll get 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, and 55. Okay, so hopefully this gives you somewhat of an idea of how this magic is happening. And even though you don't know all the ins and outs of associated types and whatnot, hopefully you can sort of understand it enough to try to implement in your own projects and crates, so forth. Now, um, quick note, notice that we made this um, fit variable a mutable variable. That's because of the logic that's inside of next. You see that we are updating our current and we're updating our next. And so if this wasn't mutable, then we wouldn't be able to do it and would get an error. Now, another thing, we're only really looking at the next uh, method. But this uh, iterator trait, it also implements several other methods like sum, min, max, which are super helpful. And I'll leave a link in the description so you can check them out. Oh, but always keep in mind that these methods, they will consume the iterator, so you cannot use it after. Okay, so it's not like you can do sum and then you can do min and so forth. Okay. And now that we've talked about the how, Let's talk about the why. So why should we use iterators? So iterators allows us to do things that would take brain power to be done in the slickest and simplest way possible. So for example, here we have a vector. And say that we wanted to create a vector v2 where each of its values are the same as v1's values, but incremented by one. So in v2 would be something like two, three, four. And you get the idea. So how would we do this? A possible implementation without using iterators would be something like so. Uh, uh, we already implemented v1. So let me delete that. So we have v1, then we'll create an empty vector v2, which is mutable because we'll be pushing. And we go create the index i, and we go from zero to length. And then we push the value at v1 incremented by one. Now, if we print this print line just for completion, you see that we get two, three, and four. So it works. But with iterators, this is actually a one-liner, like this. So we're creating this vector v2, which is of type vector. Uh, we're leaving to the compiler to figure out what type. And so we're using v1. We're iterating over v1. And now we're using this function called map, which will get the value that we're at, so at the iterator's value. It will increment one and then it will collect all of these well it will collect this iterator onto a vector um, so yeah the way that I think about collect uh, I don't know to me it wasn't immediately clear what it is but the way that I like to think about it is that iter is sort of like spreading a jigsaw puzzle on the floor and collect is sort of putting them together in the way that would like so, which in this case is a vector. Okay, so again, just for completion, let's cargo run it, and drum roll, we get the same 
output. So you see, slickest and simplest way possible. Um, another useful method that I think is worth mentioning, other than map, is filter, which um, instead of doing something like value plus one, you would say value, and then you would check a condition. And if that condition is true, then we'll add the value to the output. Um, hopefully this explanation makes sense. If not, just let me know in the comments. I can, I can give you a quick example of how it can be used. And yeah, so I guess another reason to use iterators is because they're faster than any loop you could implement yourself. So while this sort of, I guess, syntax from functional programming is a bit odd at first, use it because it's worth it. As usual, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, which hopefully won't take as long. See you then.